In this lecture, we're going to try to understand the geometric interpretation of Stokes' theorem, which is also known as the fundamental theorem for curls. And you're going to see some, all right, what is the fundamental theorem of curls, which is more commonly, I think, called Stokes' theorem? also known as Stokes' theorem. Okay, it basically says that if you take a surface integral, this is a surface integral of the curl of a vector field. So V here is just a general vector field. That's what the book uses. Don't get it confused with the potential. Okay, this is a lowercase v. That is an uppercase V. I'll try to make that clear. It is equal to uh, the uh, line integral around a closed path of that same vector field, right, dotted with uh, that path. Okay, so let me make this clear. This is a vector field. Since we're talking about potential later, I want to make it clear this is not potential just a V because that's what the book uses. Okay, uh, over here, what we're going to be doing on the left hand side is a surface integral. And remember, that means that we're going to break a surface into little tiny bits of area and then sum the curl over those little tiny bits of area over it. Okay, and then over here, of course, we're doing a line uh, integral around a closed loop, okay? So this is what Stokes' theorem is. I you to think of the left-hand side of this as, as calculating a, the sum of the curls. Let me do, there's nice pictures in the book here. But the left-hand side here is the sum of the curls over a bunch of areas. And of course, it's not really a sum because we're doing an integral because we're going to shrink those areas down to infinitesimally small amounts. And that's going to be equal to basically the circulation around a closed loop. And actually, I'll make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so the right-hand side here is like the circulation around a closed loop. at the surfaces boundary. Okay, so once again, on the, you want to think of this left hand side as calculating a bunch of tiny little curls on tiny little infinitesimal areas and then summing it all up. Boop, 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 boop. Turns out that's, you're going to get the same thing when you do that as if you just calculate the surf, uh, the circulation around a closed loop at the edge of that area. These are related to these fundamental theorems of calculus. If I remember just the fundamental theorem of calculus, it basically says that the integral of the derivative of a function is equal to the values of the endpoints. Here we've got the integral of some kind of derivative-like thing, and it's equal to a property at the boundary here or at the endpoints. Okay, so I cheated a little bit on this next slide and already drew these pictures out because I knew it would take me forever. But this is also, I kind of stole this way of uh, explaining it from the Khan Academy because I think it's pretty nice the way to think about it um, uh, conceptually. So what we're going to do here is we are going to calculate the line integral over the boundaries of all of these different sheets. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to find, and again, we just have a general vector field here. over the 
boundary, which I have in purple on the picture. And maybe I'll actually be really fancy and I'll make that pink. There we go. We're going to choose to go counterclockwise, which means in our other integral, uh, the one where we're summing the curls, our DAs would be out of the page or towards us, the way that these little sheets are drawn. I'm going to start with the one on the left here. And what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to draw my path. It's going to be counterclockwise. I'm going to go around the boundary here. And I'm going to think about whether, you know, obviously you can't calculate a number, obviously, from a picture. But I'm going to think about whether this line interval will give me zero or a positive value or a negative value. So I'm going to argue on both of the left and right sides. I'm going to get zero for our line integral. Okay, so let's just remember what we're doing. We're doing this guy. So the reason I would get zero on those sides is that at that point, this pink vector field is perpendicular to our line, both sides. And when I take the dot product of two things that are perpendicular to one another, I'm going to get zero. On this side, the bottom side, I'm going to argue that the line integral would give me a positive value. And that's because uh, the vector field is parallel to our little DL that I've drawn there. And up here, I would argue that it's going to be negative. Okay, And that's because now the vector field is anti-parallel to DL. They're pointing in the opposite direction. If I assume the vectors here uh, have the same magnitude and direction as the vectors down here, I would argue that I would end up still getting that this line integral is equal to zero, which is to say, if I look back here at Stokes' theorem, that means that there's no curl anywhere in this case. Okay. So because since there's no curl anywhere, the sum of curl, which would be this part of the integral over our surface, is 0. OK, so that's the first case. And if you look here at this vector field, it should make sense. This is just a uniform vector field pointing to the right. It should make sense that if I put a paddle wheel anywhere, in this particular vector field, I would get no circulation, no churning. So the curl is indeed everywhere, zero. All right, let's do the second one. OK, same thing. I'm going to cruise around counterclockwise. We can do some of these other ones a little bit faster. OK, this side and this side still going to be zero. This side's going to be positive. And now this side is also going to be positive because I flipped the vectors to the left up here. So now uh, the DL and V are parallel in both situations, unlike before. That's the difference. So in this case, I would argue that there's no way this line integral uh, could be 0. It's not 0. Okay. The reason is there's some curl. If I look here and I think about putting uh, my paddle wheel in, there is some curl near the y-axis. OK, therefore, the sum of the curl over the surface is not 0. OK, so that's the left-hand side. Let's do this next one. This one's going to be fun. OK, hopefully you guys can see that on all of the sides here, I'm going to get positive contributions to my line interval because now I flipped the field so that I've tried to make it so it looks like it's along the DL uh, everywhere at the boundary of this sheet. OK, for this particular um, vector field, I could put, and I didn't draw it super precisely, I should have drawn it a little bit better, but I could put my paddle wheel in 
a lot of places, okay, not just near the y-axis, but a lot of places, and get it to circulate, okay? So in this case, we've got really just a lot of curl all over the surface, uh, and our boundary is telling us that because not only is it not zero, but it's really big. We have a lot of curl over the surface, okay? All right, let's do our last one over here. Here, shoink. same deal, zero, zero here. Here, it's gonna be positive, and here again, it's gonna be negative, okay? So just like the first one, I'm gonna argue that our boundary argument tells us that the total amount of curl uh, along our surface when we sum it all up is going to be zero because that's what we're getting at the boundary. Okay, but if I look in this vector field actually, if I were to put a paddle wheel here and a paddle wheel here, okay, they would both rotate. They would both rotate. So there's some curl here and there's some curl there. Okay, let me draw a couple little paddle wheels just so you can think about that because they're quick to draw for me. There we go. There's one. All right, I'm going to draw another one here. Okay, let's think about the directions that the circulation would go at these two places on the paddle wheel. For this one, it would, the one on the lower one, it would definitely rotate counterclockwise. But the one uh, above, it would definitely rotate clockwise. Okay, so in this case, we've got we've got curl across our sheet, but it's canceling out. So if I don't really care about the curl at an individual point, but I'm trying to calculate something which is the sum of the curl over a surface, this shows that I can still use the values at the boundary. I'm still gonna get the right answer even if there is some curl in my surface, because if those two curls cancel out, if the vector field is that way, I'm still gonna find along the boundary that this line integral is going to give me zero.